Today we're going to rattle the cage of the fear and incite you to step forward into your promised land. Abundant life, full of hope and peace. We're here to cry out, restore, and defeat the wrecking ball of relational chaos that Asperger's causes. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Liv. And, and together, together we're Liv and Steve. Some of you may be familiar with the Bible story of the Israelite nation wandering the wilderness for 40 years due to their stubbornness to trust God and follow his ways. It should have only taken 11 days. At the edge of the promised land, they selected 12 spies from amongst them to check out the enemy and develop battle strategies to defeat them. God required that they drive out the enemies in order to conquer and possess the land. When the 12 spies came back, 10 of them came back with a bad report. They said the enemies were giants and that their kingdoms were too well fortified and they would not be able to defeat them. Bear in mind, they had seen God deliver them out of Egypt with incredible displays of supernatural power, which included the famous parting of the Red Sea. But there were two spies that chose with their will to believe and wholeheartedly follow God. They had full faith that God could defeat all of their enemies once they went into the promised land to conquer and possess it. These two spies were Joshua and Caleb, but many of the Israelites lost their one and only chance to go into this promised land due to one main reason, fear and lack of full faith and belief in the power of God to see them through and conquer and defeat these giants for them. As a result, they lost out on the biggest blessing of their entire life. As Liv and I began to arrive at the edge of our promised land back in 2018, we began to believe for our healing and restoration. We saw many giants. Inner healing seemed like an impossible task. All of our old patterns needed to be undone and relearned. Family members who didn't understand Asperger's. Family and friends who didn't believe in healing. And damaged, estranged, older children who didn't understand. Just to name a few. When you make a list and you put it that way, we really had giants in the land as we stood and looked at our promised land that we were going after. So we had a choice to make. We could look at the giants and see how big they were, or we could look at God and see how big he was. We are each comprised of a body, a soul, and a spirit. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. We completely hold the reins of our will. We either will do such and such, or we will not do such and such. Already today, all of us listening have made decisions using our will. So will you join us in this journey of going after the promised land, of reversing the devastating effects that the giants of Asperger's has in your life? It can mean something different for each of you. Maybe you are the Cassandra, crying out every day for something to change. Is your giant a need for you to take a courageous step that seems impossible? Or maybe your giant is that you yourself suspect that you have Asperger's, but diagnosis seems overwhelming. Or maybe your giant is finding a neurodiverse coach to help you process your life. The enemy, Satan, doesn't want you to take your next step. He doesn't want you to step into your promised land because the enemy knows that God delivers what he promises. So Steve, let's share some of the promises that we have held onto. There will be a link below to print off this list of promises. These promises are golden. Let our journey make a way for your new journey. Okay, here we go. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I love the concept that God is always walking right next to us and it's like he has like a flashlight for every step. There's no doubt that we're not going to step in a hole or anything. He shows us what we need. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. So. What I love about this verse is that word hope. If you look it up in the Hebrew, it actually means like a cord, like literally a tangible rope of hope to hold on to. 
and he will provide that for every individual. It, it'll be it'll be just what that individual needs. It's a rope of hope. It's so awesome. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. The Lord actually reminded me of a memory that has to go along with this verse. So when I was little, probably eight years old, I was on a fishing trip with my grandpa and my dad way back in the woods. We needed a four-wheel drive to get to this lake, and there was a bog around the lake. And I had casted my lure into the bog, and normally we could roll up and get the lure out. But it was too far, and I couldn't get it, and so my grandfather asked me to step onto the bog. But it was all shaky, and it was scary, and I'd never done this before. And he was getting mad and irritated. And finally, he just threw me out of the boat. And my dad didn't say anything. And so I walked over and got my lure out. And as God brought that memory back, he, he reminded me that I needed to offer forgiveness to my grandfather because he had his issues, to my dad because he had his issues. And I said, Jesus, where are you in this story? And he showed me how kind he was, how he showed me to step on the bog, and then we walked over and we got the fishing lure out and I got back in the belt. Mm. So God healed that memory. That's so awesome. That's some sure footing. That's awesome. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You know, it feels sometimes like we have immovable mountains in our life. But with God, those he removes those boulders, those mountains. Uh, it's just amazing. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. That's just so encouraging to me, to know that God didn't bring us halfway to bring us halfway, but he's got us all the way. All the way. That's so awesome. To all who mourn, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. Wow. You know... <laughs> I just love um, this painting that I did because it's like Jesus, he offers us the glass slipper because he shows us all our best version, our Cinderella version or our Prince version. And you know, what I also love is that the name Cinderella means ashes. Isn't That's that awesome. Yeah. I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. You know, these past four years since healing, I've really done a lot of work on my soul, right? Bringing healing to my mind, to my will, and to my emotions, to our marriage, and just seeing how God is putting other things in order um, with, with children and, and other relationships. I mean, it's remarkable. Yeah, it is. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. I just love, I'm growing and learning how to always find Jesus everywhere. I'm looking to him, looking to him. And I want, I want to be so close to him that I can see his reflection in my eye because that's where I'm looking. He never leaves us or forsakes us. Yeah, He's so right. good. Yeah. God reminds us that he is no respecter of persons. What he will do for one, he will do for another. If God is calling you to step into the promised land of Asperger healing, then rest assured that you will have the full power of God operating through you to achieve total victory, just like Joshua did, just like Lib and Steve did. Remember, our breakthrough makes a way for your breakthrough. Hope really is on the way. Please like us, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share this with anyone who could benefit.